Today I will show you how to set up and control a port expander. I have this uh, PCF8575 device that allows you to use just two microcontroller pins to control 16 digital pins. This is useful when you want to control several binary pins without using up several pins on your microcontroller. So by the cost of just two microcontroller pins, you can control several, let's say you read several keys uh, in a touch panel, or uh, you could control several devices and turn them on, like let's say lights, uh, or you could uh, toggle current and enable peripherals such as motors or servos. So for this demo, I will just blink a light, but the actual peripheral could be anything. So let's get to know our hardware. The device that I have is on the left side. It's this one. And I connected it currently to ground and power. And I also connected an LED. We can also read the data sheet. So from the data sheet, there are several things that you can see, like it's it supports 400 kilohertz, I squared C and so on. Uh, maybe the one very interesting bit is the maximum ratings. If you look at how much current it can drive, uh, when you put something onto low, it says it can drive up to 50 milliamps, but if you set it to high, it can only drive four milliamps. From a practical perspective, this means the LED will need between 10 and 30 amps. So I cannot drive an LED by controlling its uh, high pin. I only have to control it using ground. So either I connect it to ground and then it will light up or I disconnect ground and then it will uh, shut out. So I have to connect the ground side of the LED to uh, the pin that on the expander that I want to use. So I'll do that now. So I connected uh, pin zero to the ground of the LED and uh, now let's uh, program it. The first thing to do is if I have such a peripheral, I will do cargo search and try to find out uh, any crate that already implements this. Currently, there already exists a platform agnostic driver for all the devices, that, for several devices, and the device that I need is over here, so let me add it. If I go in Cargo Tomal, I can see the PCF8575X was added to my project, and I should be able to start using it. So it will be something like let, mutable, and probably I have to create the peripheral here. Before I know what to write, let's uh, try to read some documentation. Uh, so I will search cargo doc for this crate. The documentation gives me some examples, and uh, what seems to be the case is that I didn't change anything, so I'll have a default slave address and uh, I just have to create new and apparently I have to give it an I squared C device and the address. So I'll have to figure out how to get an I squared C device for my, my microcontroller and the address should be default. So let's do that. So for expander, I will say PCF8575 and I have to do new and I will do some I squared C, which I don't have yet and I will do address default. For I squared C, well, I would need the cargo doc to figure out what I squared C is. So let's uh, do cargo doc open again as well. Cargo doc is open. Let's, uh, let's look for I squared C. And I look, there are several implementations. The important one is that I want from my STM32, I want the I squared C abstraction. Looking through it, it seems that the way to create an I squared C is I call new and I give it an I squared C type. Wait, what is this instance? I'll figure it out. So I have I squared C one, two, and three exist. Then I need to provide it some pins. I need it to provide it a mode and clocks. If I go through things, I look into. Doesn't work. Uh, it's clock and uh, as data should be pins and apparently pins are implemented as long as the pins are an alternate mode for clock and data we'll figure that out later mode is well defined you can be standard and fast so i guess we'll use some standard mode easier and then clocks it's a standard clocks so we should already have it 
So let's uh, write this in code. The first thing is a nice square C instance. I think this one is from per peripherals. I will choose I to C one. We can choose any of them. I don't know what the clock and uh, data should be. I know that the mode should be default. Standard mode, I think 100 uh, kilohertz should work well. And I need clocks. Fixing the typo. And the problem that I have is that I don't know what S clock and SDI uh, are. So I know they are pins. So let's pick some random pins and see what kind of error we have. So I, create, I picked some random pins and it will tell me that this is not implementing a uh, in A and it doesn't support I squared C pins. It says, hey, I, I cannot do I squared C from the pins that you just gave me. So I have to figure out which pins uh, are good for clocks and data for I squared C1. There is one way of doing it, which would be to read the data sheet. So if I look at the STM32 and I look for I squared C1 in the data sheet, eventually I will find that, for example, PB6 is a good clock and PB7 is a good data. And I can, apparently I can also use PB8 and uh, PB9. And the square, the same thing for I squared C2, I squared C1. What I wanted though is look at the type system and understand how these are defined in my code. And I could not find a good way to do that. So uh, what I did, I went into go to definition for one of these pins. And I see that all these things are defined in my cargo registry. So what I'm thinking is let's just grab for I squared C1 and see how pins are defined somewhere in my hardware abstraction here. What I'm saying is I want to look for something that says clock for I squared C somewhere in my CrateSoft IO uh, STM32 packages and see what this gives me. And apparently inside Alternate mode.rs. I have a lot of definitions that tell me every single pin that could be I squared C1, C2, C3. So let's open this in VS Code. Excellent. So inside VS Code, I can see the same thing that the data sheet would tell me. So the data sheet uh, apparently, so this thing says clock for I squared C1 could be PB6 or PB8. And data would be seven and nine. And if I look at I squared C2, I could use PB3. And well, this is PB3 as well, but it, it depends on what kind of uh, device you have and so on. Realistically, I only use uh, I squared C1. So let's pick six and seven. Going back to my Blinky, I need a PB. So I will grab and I will split the GPIOs from B and clock should be six and data should be seven. And I hope now things would compile. Okay, I don't get any complaints, except that probably that expander will not be used. So let's see cargo build. I have a typo, I used PB, I should use GPIOB. And now I have lots of unused and mutability not used and so on. Let's get a pin from the expander. Uh, in my case, I used pin zero. So I got the LED. My LED is a P0. Let's look at the documentation and see what P0 can do. So apparently uh, P0 is either an input or an output pin. I want to control the LED, so I want it an output. I go in here and it says output pin, I have set low and set high. I see that here I want to implement toggle uh, and the expander doesn't support toggle, it uh, just supports on and off. So let's uh, create a toggle pin. I create this structure that says, given an output pin, I will be able to toggle it. So uh, let's uh, implement it. What I would like is to create it, and I would also like to toggle it. 
I know how to create this, so now let's implement toggle. Notice how set high, set low, and set state uh, returns a result. So I would probably need to return a result as well. This embedded diff looks a little bit ugly, so let's say let. So we implemented toggle and it probably works. So let's start using it. We'll have warnings of unused mutability. And then beside toggling the main LED, let's toggle the second LED as well. This returns a result. I will unwrap it. Notice that I did not connect yet the I squared C connections on my microcontroller. So I will try to run this and uh, probably it will fail. It panicked, right? It says I squared C arbitration loss, which means my I squared C is not connected. So I need to connect pins six and seven. So uh, let me do that. I connected them, so let's run program. Notice how the LEDs flash. So everything seems to work great. Thank you very much. I hope this was interesting or useful or maybe both. Have a great day.